Hey there, welcome on back. As always, I'm Carl with Target's the Attitude, as with my professor of knives and all things sharp. So I'm back grabbing pens and paper. It's Bug Out Wednesday again. Today, we're talking about your car. Yes, your vehicle. Whether you drive a truck, or a sedan, or a subcompact, doesn't matter. We're talking about Buckout 101 for those with no outdoors experience here. So, I'm not to, going to tell you to go out and buy a new vehicle. That's just silly. No common sense to it whatsoever. Before we get too far, let's get the little bit syllabus work out of the way, shall we? If you're new to the channel, welcome. We do primarily knife reviews and some reviews of some camping gear and survival gear. On Wednesdays, we do Bug Out 101, which is aimed at those with very little, if any, outdoors experience, but are looking for some information on how to put together a emergency kit, also known as a Bug Out bag, for next time we have some sort of emergency. Maybe next time it won't be like this pandemic where everyone has stay in place. Maybe next time it'll be more like the riots we've been having lately or a hurricane or something like that and you have to get the hell out of Dodge. So for those of you who have been with us for a while, welcome back. I'm glad you made it. Just got one question for you. Have you subscribed yet? You have? You sure? Great! Oh, that's fantastic. Wait a minute. No, there's one guy right over there um, yeah, Maryland somewhere. Apparently he hasn't subscribed yet. Now, uh, dude, it's so simple. Just hit that button right down there. Then you hit, it says subscribe. Then you hit the bell next to it. That way you get notified every time I do a neat new video. You don't miss any of the neat new videos I put out. And let's be honest, the more subscribers I have, the easier it is for me to get the stuff to make these neat new videos. So come on. But in the meantime, let's get on with class today. And I know I've been talking about uh, the kit as something to be put together for you to carry on your back if you find yourself forced to be on foot. Let's be honest, you're going to get someplace a whole lot quicker and easier if you can stay in your car. So let's outfit your car at least decently so that you never have to leave it. Um... Now, admittedly, if you get really into things, you can start looking at something really fancy like, um, say, a Land Rover or some other high-end uh, four-wheel SUV with all the fancy lights and push bars and the lift kits and all this. But you don't have to. I mean, most of you are probably living in a city somewhere. Um, yes, I do have a four-wheel drive SUV, but I go hunting. Um, and even before I blew out my knee, I wasn't about to put the deer I just shot on my back and hike it out of the woods. I mean, that's just... That's too much weight. Too heavy to carry. So I wanted a vehicle that could get into where the deer was so I could put the deer in the back and drive it out. Um, but you don't have to go that route. Whatever vehicle you've got is going to be fine. You just need something that can reliably get you from point A to point B. And I'm sure you've got that already. <coughs> maybe used, maybe new, doesn't matter. Biggest thing is one, you make sure that you keep up with it. Now, mainly after the recent uh, unpleasantness, a lot of you may not have uh, kept up with your car the way you should. It could be that, uh, well, let's face it, a lot of you were out of work. Um, yeah, I kind of, I count as essential personnel, so I was still working. But even I was getting uh, some reduced hours here and there, so... Uh, maybe you couldn't afford to have the car checked out the way it's supposed to. 
my, as soon as you can, get that taken care of. Um, it's a simple chain of consequences. Your car is a piece of shit. Your car is a piece of shit because you're no good drunk who never gets your oil changed. So it breaks down every so, so often. You can't rely on it to get you anywhere, right? Well, uh, hopefully no. Hopefully you're not a drunken SOB who never takes care of a car. But the point remains. If you don't keep the oil changed regularly, if you don't do routine maintenance, you're not going to be able to rely on your car to get the hell out of Dodge when you have to. So, first things first. Get the car taken care of. Even before you start buying all the nice gear I was talking about in the other videos that I said you might want to buy eventually. That can wait. Get the car taken for care of first. And not just the oil. Uh, get the radiator flushed on a regular basis. You don't want your car overheating because there's a bunch of crap in your radiator. You don't want your water pump to go bad because there's a lot of gunk in your radiator. Um, check the brake lines. Believe me, I had brake lines fail on me in the mountains of Pennsylvania one year. Um, and I've got a couple friends who are still five shades whiter than when they started it off. And in the case of Gene, that's saying something because he's black. Um, get, not only check the brake lines, check the brake pads, check the rotors, check the drums. Make sure everything's good. Then after you do that, put yourself together a little kit to go in the car. Just basic things. Biggest thing that goes wrong with cars all the time is battery goes dead. You've all seen it. You've all heard of it. Well, if you're at the shopping mall, no big deal. Someone probably has a pair of jumper cables. Or you can call AAA or a tow truck or what have you, and they'll come out with a set of uh, jumper cables. But if you're in an emergency situation, you can't guarantee you're going to be able to call a tow truck to come give you a jump. Um, at the very least, have your own jumper cables. They're cheap. 12 to 18 bucks. Not a big deal. Personally, what I've done is in my car, I've got a uh, battery pack I bought from Sears, one of those diehards. Um, it's heavy as sin. I mean, it's about 35 pounds. But it's great. It's got a built-in battery pack that is powerful enough to jump my car or my truck. It's got a built-in... Just a minute. All right, sorry. Now that we've got the interruption from my son taking care of, where was I? Oh, yeah. It's powerful enough that it'll jump battery of any standard car or pickup or SUV. It's got a built-in air compressor so you can inflate your tires. It's got a light built-in which is not really all that handy because it's almost impossible to aim it to where you need it to see, but it does do better than nothing. And it's got two yes USB ports and it's got two standard plugs in it so that in a real pinch you can charge your phone off of it you can plug your computer into it you can plug your radio into it um for that matter you could plug a fan or a light into it it's, it's great it ran me about 120 bucks nowadays it's probably around 140 I haven't looked you don't have to get it from Sears, though. Um, Home Depot has something very similar on in their tool section. Uh, you go to Advanced Auto Parts or AutoZone or Riley's or any of those auto parts stores. They want to be able to help you find something similar. You can get on Amazon for that matter. Just make sure it's got enough uh, what hours that it can jump your vehicle. You're great. Good to go.
Um, next thing probably should throw in can of fix a flat. No, you shouldn't leave fixed flat in your tires for a long period of time. Um, it's strictly a stopgap measure. But, you know, if you're in the middle of nowhere and it's dark and it's raining, <coughs> can of fix a flat will get that tire back up and working well enough for you to get out of there and go for a day or two until you can get someplace safe and find a good tire store to get your tire replaced. Make sure you've got a good spare is also. Um, one thing that uh, drives me nuts is I'm seeing in a lot of new cars. Well, I'm not seeing because I'm not shopping for a new car, but some of my friends who are telling me that they're not including a spare tire in new cars anymore. A lot of them. They're saving space and money by getting rid of the spare tire. You don't even have that silly little donut tire. Again, bad, bad idea in an emergency. Um, okay, you have a flat tire at the mall in normal times. Again, call AAA, call a tow truck, everything's fine. You're in the middle of a hurricane. Or you're trying to get away from wildfires like we had up in North Carolina a couple years ago. And they have out in California on a regular basis. You are not going to want to wait for a tow truck to come. Even if you can get one. And I can almost guarantee you're not going to be able to get one. So have a spare. If it didn't come with a car, go out and buy one. And buy a jack. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Could be as cheap as all get out, as long as it does the job. Just make sure you've got it. Um, if you live in an area with a lot of winter weather, you might want to throw some sand or um, some rock salt in the back. And it's really the sand's not a bad idea, even down here. If you get stuck in the mud, you can pour the sand in in front of your tire and that will help get a little bit of traction maybe get you unstuck without having to worry about anything um, of course if you really really want to go to the expense of buying yourself a new car which as I said makes no sense to me but if you really want to then go ahead and get yourself a good four-wheel drive SUV and put a winch on the front then you don't have to worry about the sand the sand's a whole lot cheaper and a lot easier to go with. Um, okay, you've already got an emergency blanket of some sort in your bug out bag. And you've probably grabbed that. But go ahead and have an extra one in your car as well. Plenty of uses for it. If nothing else, get an old U.S. surplus army blanket. They're scratchy as all get out, but if you have to call, crawl underneath your car in the middle of somewhere to figure out what's going on why your car's broken down at least it saves your clothes and you from getting in the mud and an old u.s army blanket who cares if it gets muddy throw it in the wash when you get wherever you're going fine um another thing and this drives me nuts no one carries flares anymore uh they're so cheap. A pack of five flares runs you maybe $15. They can be seen f for miles. They're easy to light. And they don't expire easily. You buy a pack of five flares today, 29 years from now, you're going to still be able to use them. Maybe not 32 years from now, but 29 years from now you will. So, yeah, $15 every 29 and 30 years. Sounds like a cheap way of uh, keeping things safe to me. Yes, you can get uh, these little orange triangles. They're very reflective and are set up to um, fold up real neatly and you can put them on the road. They work, but not that great. 
and they they cost more than the flares. So, yeah, do yourself a favor. Get the flares. Simple. Easy. As I say, all of this is just basic common sense. Um, if emergency hits, you want to make sure your car can go where you need it to go. And you need, you want to make sure that you can take care of your car if something happens so that it doesn't get where you need to go. And at the same time, you want the stuff that is going to keep you safe. Players make sure you don't get hit, and they provide a ton of light. Um, blanket keeps you warm and gives you a way to crawl under the car without getting messy. All very basics. And I'm sure there's tons of other things you can think of. Go ahead. If you've got some ideas that I haven't mentioned, go ahead and mention them down below. You never know. You might come up with something that I had never even thought of in the first place. and Or it might be something that I just forgot to mention today. Either way, can't hurt. I wish you luck. Talk it over with yourselves. Think about it. We'll see you again later on this week or next week. In the meantime, we'll leave you with a couple videos here that I think you might find interesting. And of course, as always, you can hit this target over here. And that way you can subscribe to this channel. I wish you luck. You take care. And we'll be seeing you now. Bye now.